So, um, we're, yeah, let's just chat a little bit about how you and I want to take different things on. And then I have a couple of questions about um, how to address certain aspects of the diet talk also. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, I feel great about you starting. <laughs> okay, cool. And um, just doing like to check in. And then of course we can introduce ourselves separately. Sounds good. I think you have a really nice way of um, building rapport with people. So it would be great if you started. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Yeah. Um, because of the work that you do, I think that you have a lot more experience explaining the um, mandatory reporter designation. So if you don't mind doing that at the end of our introduction, I think that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And then is there anything that you definitely want to do, like um, the invitation to tell the story or um, outlining the benefits of the dialogue? Well, I think it sounds like you have um, you uh, are good at setting the frames. I mean, we both can set frames, but um, yeah, I think as long as far as that. And then I can just start with, um, just we're gonna start with telling us, just can you explain what happened? Perfect. And then from there, you know, we can bounce back and forth about um, whatever feels like the next thing to ask. <laughs> That sounds perfect. Yeah. So if you can set help set the frames and like talk about the benefits, I mean the purpose of the meeting, that would be great. Cool. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm curious. So when we get into inviting the story and mm -hmm. the impact and listening, um, the youth also has the parent in the room. Right. So I'm thinking about how to um, invite the parent to participate, but also we wanna make sure that they don't take up too much space, so. Definitely. Yeah, I think maybe I will mention that during the outline of the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I'll tell Amy that, you know, we're here for Jessie and for Jessie to, to share her story and take accountability and that there will be a space for, for Amy to share the impacts for her. So I'll just start that right off the top. So mm -hmm. we can tone set then. Mm -hmm. And then as far as when, when we're actually in it, mm -hmm. um, how do we intentionally create space for that? Or should we just let it happen organically? I think we can see if it happens organically. And if not, you know, once we, maybe after Jesse has shared like a little bit about the events and what's going on in past cases, I've seen that if a youth is having a hard time really making the connection between their actions and the impacts, it can be a great access point to say, you know, how has that affected your family is now like, can we hear from Amy now, Amy, how has that affected the family? And then to, to look back to the youth and say, thanks for sharing, Amy, let's go back to Jesse, Jesse, how does that feel to hear your mom say that? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like that spacing. If that doesn't come up organically, then maybe we can kind of structure that in. Okay. That sounds good. Great. Um, okay. And then from there, um, if it seems like they're willing to take responsibility or have any uh, interest in dialogue, we can talk more about the dialogue and what that would look like and Perfect. answering questions, stuff like that. That sounds really good. Heather. And I, I don't know a ton about where this case is in the system, but I think we, we don't have to focus so much on that as we're, we can always find that out later um, if we are gonna come to dialogue and have like, um, a, an agreement that involves restitution or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just another thought that I had going back to the beginning when we're setting frames mm -hmm. um, to also talk some logistics about being on a video chat. Perfect. Well, we can t tell them um, if we if we get bumped off, we'll just wait for you to rejoin, mm -hmm. um, and we could give them our contact info. Awesome. Um, I have a Google number that I can give them Great. if they want to if they want to call or text if that they really if they good. really can't get back on. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind sharing that when we get to kind of mm -hmm. the the outline of the purpose today, and then sharing about um, 
confidentiality and mandatory reporting, maybe that's a good time to share that. Sure. Uh, I'm just going to do it at the beginning. Oh, perfect. Just so that they have it in case something. Smart. <laughs> just logistics. Yeah. Um, any other logistics stuff we should talk about? I mean, this is a shorter conversation, so I don't think we need to like build in a break or anything like that. So I think that sounds good. Okay, okay so there's also the facilitator's role, finding out their hopes um, and then preparation for dialogue. Anything in that? We can also just see, let that happen organically too. Yeah. I'm feeling ready. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good too. Should we, I'll uh, go ahead and let them back in. Sounds great. All right. Hey there. Hi, looks like Hi. Amy's got it. Um, and Jesse's got it great. So we'll uh, kind of launch right in. Um, it's great to see you both here. Thank you so much for joining us in this virtual format. This is still a little new for uh, Lauren and I, but we're really glad to be able to make this work. I'm Corinne Gould, I use she, her pronouns, and um, I'm one of the co-facilitators here. We're excited to um, be able to connect with you, Jesse, and hear a little bit about your experience and um, to learn a little bit more about the harm that was caused and hear how to make that right and um, hold space with you. Lauren and I are co-facilitators and also community members. Um, so that's our role here today. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping, since we are on a technical platform in Zoom. Um, are you both comfortable with Zoom? Have you used Zoom uh, for school or work, Amy and Jesse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, great. Well, um, if we have any trouble, like you get bounced off or anything, I think Lauren's going to share a, a Google contact in the chat there. So you can feel free to text or call that number and we'll get back online as soon as possible. Yeah, um, and I'm Lauren. I use she, her pronouns too, and I also um, I really appreciate you both being here. And also, Amy, thank you for being here to help um, support and to be in your um, for being here today too. So I'm gonna put my number in the chat and go ahead and feel free to either text or call if something does happen and you need to get in touch. Okay. Well, um, I should kick things off also by asking, um, Jesse, is that how you'd prefer us to, to call you? Is that your preferred name or do you have a nickname? Uh, Jesse, Jesse's good. Great. And for you, Amy, is Amy what you'd like for us to use as well? Yep, that's fine. Great, cool. Well, um, just as a little bit of an introduction to what we're gonna spend the next 30-ish uh, minutes doing together. We're going to talk through um, the incident which occurred about a month ago. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll really have Jesse share as much um, as you're interested and comfortable with us. This is a totally confidential conversation. So we won't share out any information um, with uh, Marty who's yard ornaments were damaged or with um, anyone outside this room. So this is fully confidential conversation. Um, and the, the kind of purpose of this call is for us to describe what some of the benefits of a restorative dialogue could be. So we'll talk through the incident today and then we can talk about um, your interest in potentially meeting with Marty by video to have a conversation next week, if that sounds like that's a good fit for us. So that's what we're doing here today. Um, and then uh, you can feel free to ask questions as we're, we're describing this too. Lauren, do you have any other points about that? Um, just um, in regards to um, how we're all going to be here together today, um, we are asking that you, to, it's gonna be a confidential space um, with just a couple of exceptions. Um, we're just asking that you all not record this. We're not going to be recording it. Um, and so we just want to make sure that, um, yeah, what we talk about here stays here. So we, will you all agree to uh, not record this conversation? Mm-hmm. 
Okay, and then also um, just for your own comfort, um, just to make sure that you find a spot where you feel um, like you can have a open conversation. Hopefully you can are in a space in your where you're at where that is possible. Um, so I suppose if you do need to move or if you feel like you, there's something that needs to change, feel free to at any moment, just let us know because we want to make sure that this feels um, like you can have an open conversation with us. So if at any moment you do need to take a break um, or if you, know, you need to pause the conversation, that's totally possible. Um, in regards to confidentiality, uh, one of the, the things that is an exception is that Corinne and I are both mandatory reporters. So that means if we hear of any, anything um, where um, a youth or an elderly person is, um, is being caused harm, we have to report that. Um, just so you know, this is so you know that ahead of time. Um, do y'all have any questions or thoughts about the conversation or just in general before we get started? All right. Um, so we'll start off with Jesse um, kind of sharing your experience and, and Lauren and I might offer some questions or um, you know, ask for clarification in a couple points, but really it's a space for you to, to share about the incident, what happened for you, what was going on, um, and then to kind of reflect on the impacts for you and your community. And then Amy, at that point, we'll invite you to kind of share your experience as well. So we'll start with Jesse, um, but then we'll invite you to kind of join in and, and share at that point as well. Does that sound good? Yeah, I just wonder, like, um, does it mean by doing this that Jesse's not in trouble anymore? That's a great question. So with the restorative dialogue program, we are kind of separate from the process that you might be going through with Multnomah County. So we got this referral um, through a judge, but it's completely voluntary. So this process doesn't have an impact on how this case is handled with Multnomah County. Um, this is something that we think has a great benefit for the community and for the person who was harmed. And we think um, this kind of dialogue process gives a youth like Jesse the chance to kind of have your voice heard in a way that might not be included in a process with Multnomah County. Um, so this won't reduce, you know, any of the um, requests that the judge is making. It's a fully voluntary process. Um, and if after this conversation, you don't wanna move forward or at any point during the conversation, you don't wanna move forward, that's totally acceptable. Um, it's totally up to Jesse how much time you wanna spend here with us. Okay. Yeah, thank you for asking that, Amy. Yeah, I just wondered if like, you know, we get credit or anything like that, so. I wish, um, no, this is, this is like a brownie points and if it feels good and helpful for you and your family and your community, but it doesn't have a direct impact on um, any of the processes mm -hmm. with Multnomah. Mm -hmm. Jesse, are you good with that? Oh, Jesse, we should check in and see if your mic is working. I didn't uh, hear your response. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can now, thank you. <clears throat> awesome, well, I think we'll just leave this space open for you. Jesse, do you wanna tell us um, about the incident and what was going on for you then? Um, okay. Um, well, it uh, wasn't having a very good day. Um, I was late to school and, um, and got detention for being late. And, um, and I found out I'm failing one of my classes. And so um, when I was walking home, I just, uh, um, I had a lot of, uh, I guess I was frustrated and I was mad. Um, and I just 
wanted to get that out. So, um, yeah, I just, I saw the, um, you know, little statue things and just wanted to just break something. Is it, is it okay if I ask Jesse questions too? Because Jesse doesn't really want to talk to me, but maybe if you guys are here. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Um, why don't we take some more time chatting with Jesse about the experience and then we'll leave some room for you to ask questions as well, if that sounds good. Okay. Thank you. So Jesse, I hear that kind of anger was something that you were going through that day with detention and, and failing a class, that does sound really frustrating. So when you were coming home past Marty's yard, was there anything about, um, you know, that house or that yard that was especially I, I don't know who lives there. I mean, yeah. I, I, it was just kind of there while you were feeling was, there angry. were those they looked like they would really break. <laughs> Can you give us a just to help us get a fill out the picture of what happened that day? Um, do you can, you can you tell us a little bit more details about um, just like where Marty's yard is compared to where you live. Uh, where you, it was on your way home from school, I heard. Can you tell us a little bit more about what happened that day and about where the location was going to be? Um, it was just, I mean, there's lots of different ways I could walk home. And um, I just happened to walk home that way. I don't usually go that way and I, so I hadn't really noticed the stuff there before. I mean, it's only, I don't know, a couple of blocks from my house, but you know, there's a lot of, a lot of streets there, a lot of, a lot of ways I could go. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, uh, I didn't, uh, my mom and her boyfriend were fighting that morning. That's why I was late and I, was not in a big hurry to get back home and I just wanted to I saw I saw those little animal statues and I just I just thought I thought it would help I thought I would feel better if I just like broke it up thanks um, for sharing it didn't, that didn't really make me feel any better but but you know, that's what I was thinking. I'm sorry that you were going through such a terrible day. <laughs> um, do you know the people that lived in that house? Oh no, no, I don't know who lives there. Mm -hmm. I'm really, um, I'm really nervous about meeting that whoever it is that lives there. Mm -hmm. What makes you feel nervous to meet them? Uh, they're probably pretty mad at me. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you share with us what happened after you broke up the animals? You didn't feel any better. And then what happened after that? I just, I just went home. I started to go home and, um, and then a uh, 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 police guy pulls up by me and starts asking me questions. And uh, he's like, did you go by so-and-so? And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so I told him that I did. Um, he was asking if I broke the little statues and I said I did. And um, yeah, so but now here we are. Mm -hmm. What has it been like for you to 
to have this continue for more than a month. You know, the incident happened a month ago, but clearly you've had to you've had to be responsible for a lot of things since then uh, on top no, of what I mean, was stressing you out. I, I didn't I didn't realize it was a big deal. And and now now I get that it is that it is a big deal. Um, so I mean I feel bad, you know. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So it sounds like you um, broke them out of frustration and <clears throat> having a really bad day, and then now you're feeling a little bit nervous about it. How how are you feeling now about what happened? Well, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I'd found something else to do. Um, you know, it's just, it was like, just a spur of the moment kind of, there it is. I'm going to give it a kick, kind of crack. I guess I'll, you know, drop it, see what it does, you know. So it wasn't, I didn't, I didn't think very hard and next time I should think a little harder. <laughs> how many figurines, like, how, can you give us a sense of what the damage was? Well, I'm sorry, what? Can you give us a sense of what the damage was? I, I don't know. I, I know the person whose house it was wasn't happy about it, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I can do now. Oh, I meant um, just to help us get a sense of what, what actually. Oh, how many did I break? Yeah. A lot of them. <laughs> it sounds, Jesse, like, like since thinking about that incident, you would do something differently if you were to have a frustrating day like that again. Is that true? Well, I wouldn't do that. I don't, I don't know what I would do, but I wouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that with us. I think we'll probably ask some, some more questions um, just to get some more information about how you're feeling. And, um, but now is maybe a good time to hear from Amy. Amy, what was the experience like for you to have Jesse to come home and, and then a police officer to come to the door? And, and what's it feel like to hear her share this story with you. It's unfortunate that she wants to blame me for the way her day went, because what I see is that you've been in detention, that you're flunking your classes, and now there's cops at our door. And that's really the last thing we need right now is to, to have cops at the house. And so she won't talk to me and I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to help you. And so that's why I'm like, look, we'll do this thing with you guys. If this gets my kid out of trouble, um, I'm sorry for whatever happened to the man who owns these things. I feel terribly for him. Um, and yeah, it's time to just like do the right thing here and let's all move on. That's what I think. Thanks for sharing that. Go ahead, Lauren. Well, I was just going to say, it sounds like there's a lot of frustration from your end as well, Amy. Um, you said a, a, bit of, a few moments ago that you had some questions for Jesse. I was wondering if you would um, share them with Corinne and I not necessarily asking Jesse directly, but if you have questions for Jesse, sharing it with us, what would those questions be? Okay. You mean like pretend Jesse's not here? I'm just curious to hear what questions you have for her. Uh, yeah, I, I want to ask her, you know, what was it like, have there, you know, I just want to know if she's telling me the truth about stuff. You know, I want to know what what's not being said. I want to know uh, who she's hanging out with. You know, like I want to know. 
I want to know if you're doing drugs. I want to know what's making you act crazy like this. Um, you know, like, Jesse, you're not violent. Like, you get in trouble, but you're not violent. So I, I don't like this stuff. And, and I want it to stop. And uh, I just want to know why, like, what's going on. Yeah. Thanks, Amy. I think something that I'm hearing, Amy, is is that you don't know how to how to help and support Jesse. That's something you said, but that you want to, right? You want to show up for Jesse in the ways that she needs. Is that true? Yeah, sure. I want my kid to be happy, but I definitely don't want cops at my door too. For sure. Yeah. So it sounds like there's some things that you don't you want to know if there's other stuff going on. Yep. Um, Jesse, how does it feel to hear those questions? Feels like uh, like nothing ever changes. Like um, like when I was little and my dad was there, there was screaming and fighting, and um, now that he's not and there's her boyfriend there they're screaming and fighting and then everybody wants to know what's wrong with me so it sounds like there's some some stuff that's coming up uh that is bringing up some other things from the past <laughs> um First of all, I just wanted to appreciate both of you for sharing um, what's important to you all. And it sounds like there's um, some more stuff that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of how to move forward with having a conversation, potentially having a dialogue, um, I wanted to come back to what you said, Jesse, about um, ha having some regrets for what you did. And um, I'm just curious what your thoughts are or what your feelings are about having a conversation um, with the folks that um, that you, you broke their stuff. And it sounds like you do feel some regret about it. And so I'm wondering um, how you would like to move forward. Is there, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, have a conversation, have a dialogue, you can write a letter. Um, but I'm, I'm just curious what your thoughts and feelings are about um, mm -hmm. how you'd like to move forward. So um, I, I think I have to talk to him. I, it's not something I'm looking forward to, <laughs> but I understand that that he asked for that, and that you know, I mean, um, that's he's not asking a lot just. To want to talk to me <laughs> mm -hmm. so I, I you know I don't know what I don't know what happens then I don't know what I can do but if he wants to talk to me I feel like I need to do that mm -hmm. yeah Jesse I think um, I want to hold space that you know you and Amy are are talking through some really hard things and there's definitely space in this conversation for you to explore that a little bit more, but I think Lauren and I would love to describe what the dialogue would look like. Um, Cause it sounds like you're taking accountability for the actions that you took uh, on the day of the incident and you're interested in making things right. Even if that is just having a conversation. So let's describe what that dialogue might look like. 
Um, and then if you want to return to some of the other things that were frustrating to you on the day of the incident, we could talk through some more of those. How's that sound? Great. So the dialogue would be in a Zoom setting like this. Um, Lauren and I can send you a couple questions in advance um, by email. We can and offer those to you at the end of this meeting to kind of think over to to get prepared for that conversation. And Lauren and I will be there as facilitators just to make sure that we can be um, impartial and and ensure that there's a respectful conversation um, and to keep us on time so that it's just about an hour. Um, Amy, you would be invited to to join similar to this conversation. You'll be there to support Jesse. Um, and there may be a moment where we would invite you to share about your experience, but the majority of the conversation would be um, hearing from Jesse about what that experience had been like, um, and then hearing from the person who was caused harm about what his experience has been. And then often um, folks who have experienced harm want to ask a couple questions. So Marty ha might have some questions for you, Jesse, just to get more information. Um, and then uh, if it's of interest to, to Marty, he might want to come to some kind of agreement about what could make things right. Um, so that would be voluntary uh, on your part, Jesse. You don't have to commit to anything, but if you're interested in, in making things right and Marty has some ideas about what would help him feel safer in his community and feel like um, you've done the work to repair the harm, then that's something that we can do as well. Anything I missed about that process, Lauren, or what it might look like? Um, that was no, that was great. Um, I did have a thought, though, as you were talking just to um, Amy. Um, I was just curious. I know that you had a lot of questions for Jesse, um, and this also impacts you and in the community that you're living in. So I was curious if there was any needs that you had around because um, it sounds like Marty is only lives, Marty lives really close to you. Um, if you had any feelings about um, the dialogue with Marty and if you had any needs about um, um, what's needed in order to make things right with somebody who lives in your community. Mm -hmm. Not really. I think uh, what y'all are doing is great. I don't want any bad blood with my neighbors. Um, <laughs> and I want to I want to get to the bottom of things, you know, and, and understand <clears throat> just like everybody else. So um, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay with uh, with talking to Marty and uh, meeting him. And it's great to have other people there, you know, to help with that because I'd probably be too nervous to just go talk to him myself, you know? Totally. Um, maybe, Corinne, maybe, could you talk a little bit about the facilitator role in the dialogue? Yeah, definitely. Um, so in addition to setting up the, the Zoom meeting and sending out the links and getting the schedules, um, Lauren and I will be there in a similar way to kind of um, lay out kind of what the intention is for the dialogue to have a respectful conversation where both parties can be heard and kind of explain the context of their experiences. And then we might prompt with a couple questions or we might, um, you know, be quieter than we have been in this meeting. And then we'll be there to ensure that all communication is really respectful. Um, those meetings tend to be about an hour. So we'll also uh, help everyone take a quick break in the middle. Um, to use the restroom or get some water. Uh, and then if there is interest in having like a formal agreement at the end, Lauren and I will help facilitate, you know, writing out what that agreement looks like. Um, it could really be anything in some of the, um, the dialogues that I've worked on in the past. Uh, someone who was caused harm just wanted to know that the youth was going to finish high school um, or that they asked for, you know, support with mowing the lawn or something like that. So it can be really broad. It gets to come from um, Jesse Yu and from um, what Marty thinks would be helpful. So Lauren and I aren't there to kind of, um, you know, implement or, or suggest things as much as just hold space that if that agreement is helpful, it can be written out. Um, 
And again, it's a totally voluntary process. So at any point, Jesse, you could say that it's not working out for you and your family. You're not interested in pursuing the dialogue and Marty could do the same. Um, uh, to this point, it sounds like there's interest from Jesse and Amy, which sounds great. Um, we'll be meeting with Marty later and, and confirm that he's still interested in the dialogue and then we can get things scheduled. Yeah. I think the last question I kind of want to leave with Jesse is what is the kind of best case scenario for you? What would, what would a perfect conversation with Marty look like for you? Hmm. Um. Well, I, I, it sounds like it's going to be better than I thought. <laughs> um, I thought it was just, you know, so that he could tell me how mad he is. Um, but if there's a way that we can, you know, work something out, I mean, I think I would feel better if I was able to work something out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel, I feel a little better about about talking to him. Great. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, and we, we want you to feel supported in this. Mm -hmm. And we, we can send out a few questions um, with a sheet just to help you prepare for the dialogue, just to help you mm -hmm. through what are some things that you might want to discuss. Okay. Awesome. Well, if there, if you guys have any more questions, um, you can definitely, between now and, and the dialogue, we can talk by phone or email um, so that you have all the information before we all come together in a Zoom call. But I think now um, let's pull out our schedules and see when uh, a couple dates and times are that you could fit in a conversation would be. Does that sound good? Okay, great. Yeah, it sounds like Marty is interested in learning more about restorative dialogue um, and the program. So I think he might be pretty open to meeting with Jesse, which is great. Um, do you feel like you want to do the introduction this time around? I'm happy to do it again. Or if you're feeling up for it, I think that'd be great. Well, a thought occurred to me from last time um, yeah. and that it might be nice to share a little bit more about ourselves. Great not necessarily a whole lot of detail, but more just like why we're there and like why, why we feel restorative dialogue is important. Um, just so that they have a sense of our human humanity. <laughs> I think that's a great idea. Um, so maybe we could start off just by sharing that and we can just alternate. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can go into the kind of setting frames about um, the logistics of being online and how long it's gonna take and um, and then uh, uh, like a little bit about confidentiality and also that it's a voluntary process. Great. And um, yeah, and then after that, do you want to jump into just the purpose of the dialogue and sure, like what to expect for the meeting today? Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and then we can just jump into the story and perfect. Is there anything else that we need to cover before that? Um, I think as we described last time, maybe, uh, in the last couple minutes, just like really framing what the benefits of the dialogue are for Marty as we see them and then getting like reiterating the voluntariness of the process and then getting verbal confirmation that that is interesting to him before we say, you know, the youth has also expressed interest and commitment to that. Like, let's, let's put something on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But reiterating voluntary at that point is, I think, great. Yeah. Yeah. And also making sure that they know that, that uh, Marty knows that we can take breaks at any time. Right. That, um, they can stop the process at any time. Perfect. That sounds good. So yeah. you'll kick us off with some of the like housekeeping stuff, and then I'll jump into kind of outline of today's meeting and then we'll go into story yeah perfect yep. welcome thanks very much for being here um thank you appreciate appreciate having you here um so uh i'm lauren are you sure you hear pronouns this is corinne um we're just going to take a few minutes to introduce ourselves um and then 
we can talk a little bit more about um, what's going to happen today in our chat with you and then also what could potentially happen in a restorative justice dialogue. Uh, sure. In the Thank you. So, yeah, um, so basically yeah, I'm Lauren. I, uh, I appreciate being able to uh, facilitate restorative justice dialogues in um, just that it's uh, great to hold space to for people to hear each other's perspectives and also just um, wanting to really get your needs met in this process and understand what you've been through and also see if there's any any opportunities going forward that can um, really meet your needs and um, make things right. Mm -hmm. Hi, Marty. Okay. I'm Corinne. Like Lauren, I volunteer with this program because I really see a benefit to our community when there are opportunities to kind of connect and talk on a human level, you know, alongside or outside of the criminal justice system to, to really acknowledge, you know, the people who have caused harm to take accountability and, and for people who have experienced harm to have your voice heard in the ways that you want. So um, I've been with this program about two years, two and a half years, and I'm really glad that you're you're able to make time for us to meet today. Sure. Um, so just a few logistics things uh, to get us started. Um, we are over Zoom. <laughs> and so um, just to name that there might be some distractions that come up, there might be some noises in the background, and that's okay. Um, we are inviting everyone to just keep their microphones on just to keep the dialogue open. And um, yeah, if anything comes up, then we'll just acknowledge that as part of the process. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, if, if for any reason any of us get bumped off, we'll just wait for the person to rejoin. Um, and then if you do get bumped off and you for some reason can't get back on, um, I've given you my phone number and you can go ahead and get in touch with me and then we'll figure out a way to, to keep the dialogue going or the uh, conversation going. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, Corinne, you wanna talk about the, um, well, I guess I can also just cover briefly um, about confidentiality. That sounds great. Yeah. Um, so this conversation is confidential and so we're asking uh, asking you not to record and we will also not be recording. Um, and so that what stays here, well, what we talk about here stays here. Does that sound okay? Fair enough. And we might be taking notes, but that's, um, that's just us trying to keep track of the conversation. <laughs> um, and then the only exception to confidentiality is that uh, Corinne and I are both mandatory reporters. So um, if we hear of any anything that comes up that's either could cause harm to elderly or or youth that we have to report that. Yeah, so for our conversation today, we'll take about 30 minutes um, and hear from you for the majority of that time, just kind of get to know what happened about a month ago on the day of the incident, what that's been like for you, um, what the impacts of that have been in your life and for your community. And um, we'll, we'll talk about what would it take to have you feel like that harm was made right? You know, what would make you feel safer and, and more comfortable? And I think those are great things for us to talk about because we can consider if those are possibilities, um, if we come together for a dialogue with the youth. Um, and then we can describe a little bit more about what that setting would be like and what some of the outcomes of having a, a dialogue with the youth could look like. Um, but let's start off just by getting to know you a little bit more. And um, if you're interested in sharing as much or as little as you want to about the day of the incident and what was kind of going on for you at the time. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, so I leave my house to go for a walk. I do that every day. Um, by the way, I'm blind. So my, my vision is very, very low. So I, I work mm -hmm. from home. And uh, I took a walk and I come back and my, my yard is torn up. The, the, 
ceramic animals in in my yard i had a series of 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 rabbits that were destroyed just splattered all over the place and i was scared i i I thought somebody had vandalized my house is what i was i was thinking because i'm new in the area and you know I, i don't know anybody yet so um but the neighbors seemed cool so um yeah so i went to check my house everything seemed to to be fine uh there was no damage in the home and um so before I did anything, I just I just went to my my new neighbors and just banged on doors and asked if anybody had seen anything. Nobody said much. And um, yeah, I, I called the police. So. So so here's the thing. This is my house. This is my safe place. This is where I live. And and those rabbits, those weren't just like you can't go get those from Hobby Lobby. I'm I'm a ceramicist. I, I made those. Mm-hmm. Those are my art pieces. They were were a series of things that I was making. They can't be replaced unless I make them again. Right? I mean, that's that's my livelihood. That that's that's what I do for a living. And I come home and s- see my stuff all over the place. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, I call the cops. Now, look, here you guys are calling me and talking about accountability and restorative. You can't restore the stuff that I broke. And here's another thing. Really what I want to do is why do, why do you do it? Why do you even do it? There's plenty of houses on the damn street. Why do you do it? Why is it my house? So, so and I don't know that a system or a program like yours is going to do anything for a guy like this. I mean, I've, I've seen it before, right? You, 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 you take them camping, you slap them on the wrist, you do whatever, they promise to do whatever, they scoop a little bit of stuff in a place and they call it whatever, community service. I, what's in this for him? What's in this for me? How do I get mine back? And how, how do I even know if he's is he even remorseful, right? Does he even care? Yeah. So those those are my questions. Mm-hmm. I know for sure with the cops involved, he goes somewhere. He's out of my yard for a minute. Maybe that's a lesson that he needs. But I kind of been in those spaces too before. I was young. I was stupid, but I wasn't a hater. So there's a difference between doing stuff because you got this weird energy youth energy i get that but i don't know if it was that or he's just hating mm-hmm. and i don't know what to do with that yeah. so right, I'm, I'm i'm holding those spaces i want to think there could be something different but the way my place was torn up you know tear up two or three places well maybe this is this was my house the only one it was right further down the street than everybody else's mm-hmm. so you know I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how I feel. Thank you so much for sharing that, Marty. It sounds like an incredible invasion of your space. And I'm, I'm really sorry that this happened to you and that your art was damaged and that you were fearful in a new neighborhood. That sounds extraordinarily hard. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it's not just uh, like you've broken things. It's also your livelihood and mm-hmm. um, things that just can't re- be replaced. Yeah. And did I mention I'm blind? Those things aren't easy to make. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's there's just there's just a lot in it, and I live a whole life trying not to be afraid. And for me not to be afraid, I need to know that this person is gone or something has changed. I don't like yeah. feeling afraid because when I feel afraid, I get angry and I get angry. Maybe I'll put a bear trap in my yard the next time. I don't know. I just, I just, I don't want this. And I want to know that whatever happens, it's not going to happen again. Mm-hmm. I hear so. that definitely as one of your major goals, assurance that this wouldn't happen again. Can you tell us a little bit more about 
what would make you feel safer other than assurance that this wouldn't happen again or, or an apology or accountability for actions? Can you tell us what, what would change how you're feeling about this incident now? First of all, dude could come say he's sorry. Mm -hmm. He can tell me why he did it. Maybe not why he did it, or what he was feeling when he was doing it. Maybe that's the more pertinent question. I don't know. Um, why my house? Mm -hmm. what, does he, what, do, what does he think he could do to make things better? I don't, look, I don't wanna come to a place where we just set it all up for this person who's did this crappy thing to walk some straight and narrow line that we give them. I want them to be real accountable. I want them to be part of the process. I want them mm -hmm. to say, I'm sorry, not their mom to write the note. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is a shared motivation for all of us, for sure, for, for this to include some self-determination that you get to um, have your needs met, Marty, and also that, that this isn't something that the youth is forced to do. Um, this is a fully voluntary process from beginning to end. Um, We'll, we're going to definitely reiterate that a couple times today and as we communicate moving forward, but this is voluntary for you. If your needs aren't being met, if, um, you know, your conversations with Lauren and I aren't, aren't meeting your needs, this is totally voluntary for you and this is fully voluntary for the youth as well. So um, if, if at any point either one of you is not getting what you need out of the arrangement, then um, we'll move forward with something else. So he asked you to call me or did the cops ask you to call me? That's a good question. Lauren, do you want to talk about the referral process a little bit? Well, basically, I mean, our, our goal in this, well, so we got a referral from the um, JC and um, that just, we don't get a whole lot of information about the case itself. Um, so it's really Corinne and our job to have a meeting with both of you um, to see what your needs are and also what needs to happen to move forward. So like Corinne said, um, it's not necessarily a dialogue that needs to happen. It's really just an opportunity for us to have a conversation with you to see what you're, where you're at with things and what your needs are. And that, I mean, that's really the the most important thing. It's, we, we have a conversation with the youth just to make, just to get a sense of what happened um, and also where they're at with things. But really we're trying to just have a conversation with you to see what you need and how we can help facilitate that. Mm -hmm. I need an apology. Mm -hmm. I need to feel safe. Mm -hmm. I need to know it won't happen again. Mm -hmm. And if I had my dream, I'd get the money back for the 70, I'd get the money back for the stuff that he's mm -hmm. broke. Mm -hmm. It's 1500 bucks, three rabbits. Lucky it wasn't the other four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So I don't know how we can get there from this conversation, but I mean, yeah. apology, I need to know He's sorry. I need to know he won't do it again. Right. I would, I really need to be able to pay my rent. Mm -hmm. I need to be able to pay my rent. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you're also looking for affirmation that you and your house weren't being targeted for Thanks. a specific reason. That's correct. That's correct. Because if this kid is some kind of involved in some kind of white supremacy thing or something. I don't know if there's any help for that. And that might be for somebody else. And maybe if there's a chance for him, if, if that's the route he's going down, I don't know. Maybe, maybe this can be, I just need to know. If that's the thing, that's the scariest thing for me. Mm -hmm. I need to know who my neighbors are and I need to know who they, what they aren't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Yes, I need to know why my space was targeted and where his head was at, because that's the scariest thing. I just don't know. Everything yeah. else, look, I can, I can make more rabbits. I can, I can maybe pay the rent next month. It's gonna be tight, but I can do it. But 
I don't want to be afraid. Yeah. And I don't want this to happen again. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that with us. And, you know, that fear, I think, is it must be really hard to be living with that right now. And if Lauren and I can offer you some assurance, we've met with the youth and there's no indication for us that there was um, racially motivated hate in this specific incident. So I think it's important that you hear that from the youth, whether that's in a dialogue or by a letter or, or another preferred method, but we just want you to know we wouldn't move forward ever putting you in a position to um, have a conversation with someone that wished you ill in that way. Thank you very, very much. That mm -hmm. I, I'm just breathing a sigh of relief to hear that. I, I really appreciate that because this is serious. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And as far as the process goes, of um, if, if a dialogue does take place, mm -hmm. um, are, we very much don't want to cause any more harm. And so we wouldn't proceed with the dialogue if we didn't think that um, the youth was in a position to take some form of accountability or at least be able to have a dialogue. Mm -hmm. So just in terms of, of that, um, yeah. We would so are you, I didn't mean to interrupt, but have, did you, did you, have you spoken to the person or interviewed them or, or is this the file that you read? So we have met with the youth. Um, we had an initial meeting with them and, and similar to the conversation that we're having with you, kind of finding out what the needs are, what um, the setting around the, the conflict was. And if it meets your needs right now, Marty, I'd love to describe what a dialogue could look like and some of the benefits. Um, that way you can ask us some questions about that. Does that sound good for what we talk about next? Yes, thank you. Great. So um, the kind of coming together is, is one of the great outcomes for a restorative dialogue process like this, but it's not the only possible outcome. Um, but describing that, uh, it would look like a Zoom call similar to this. Um, we would bring you in and maybe Lauren or, or I would meet with you um, kind of one-on-one -on -one for a few minutes just to make sure that you were feeling comfortable and confident and get any questions answered. And then the other one of us would meet with the youth um, and their parent. They'll have a support person with them. You would be welcome to have a support person with you as well if that um, was helpful to you. And then um, we would move into the space together. Lauren and I would serve as the co-facilitators where we kind of set the expectations. We hold the space for, um, you know, taking a break if we need to use a bathroom midway through and timekeeping and things like that, but also ensuring that the conversation remains respectful, that the youth is taking accountability for her actions, um, and that your questions uh, are, are getting answers that are, you know, illuminating for you. So we might be kind of prompting questions back and forth if that's helpful, or we might be quieter than we are in this meeting even, um, so that you and, and the youth can have kind of a direct conversation. So that's kind of what the setting looks like, um, where you would be able to share your story, kind of express similarly to what you shared with us, if that sounds good to you, kind of what the impact was, what the day was like, and what the aftermath has been for you and what the impacts are. Um, and then the youth similarly would kind of share about their experience, what they were feeling at the time, and answer some questions that you might have for them. Um, and then a, a voluntary part of the process, which may suit your needs or might not, you, we sometimes use um, agreements at the end of a dialogue. Um, as you were saying, it sounds like there's a little bit of, um, you know, you, you've seen the system work in the past that when there's kind of a punitive measure put on a youth, they may or may not complete it. This verbal agreement um, is really about naming what would repair the harm for you and then having the youth commit to repairing that harm. So after that point of that agreement, Lauren and I don't uh, you know, follow up regularly to insist that that agreement be met, but it's more of a way to honor the experience that you're both having and, um, and come to the decision of what would look like making amends together rather than having it imposed by someone else. Um, 
That's so our, an interesting process. Yes, definitely an interesting process. And it can be really organic. So we have the flexibility to decide what works for you um, and the youth and um, leave what doesn't basically. So the hope there is that you get to kind of hear the story and the context behind the youth's actions. Um, we can't guarantee an apology as direct, but we can guarantee that the youth will come to the meeting with accountability for her actions. Um, and, and the hope is that you get to be more involved in having your needs met than say another type of process would allow for. Fair enough. Let me ask a question about, so you said I could have a, would you call it a safety person? Yeah, a support person, a family a member or a person. friend there with you. I see. And and the, the youth will have their own support person? Yeah, in this case, it will be um, the parent, the mother of the youth. If I, if, if I could, could I ask that support person a question about the person with whom I'm talking? Or is it just between me and the youth? We try to keep the dialogue pretty direct between you and the youth, but um, there's definitely space because this is a community uh, led kind of process. You know, the, the support people in our lives are also members of those communities, right? Like they're impacted by this incident as well. So there could definitely be space for you to engage respectfully with the support person as well, if that fits. Okay, okay, just a question, but thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I just wanted to talk a little bit to um, our role as a facil as facilitators. Uh, Corinne already touched a little bit on it. But basically, um, we really want the best for both of you, and we're going to do our best to just hold space. And um, yeah, like Corinne said, sometimes we might guide the dialogue, but also if you know if it feels best that you need to ask each other questions and just have a a conversation between you all, there'll be space for that. So we'll make sure that we're, our goal is to um, just make sure everybody is taken care of and that the conversation um, stays on track, but the, most of it is just, is gonna be up to you and getting your needs met. As, as far as y'all are, are you, are you police? Are you social workers? Are you, what, what what's your relationship with with police i mean I, I guess what i'm asking is are you grassroots are you a federal entity are you an extension of the justice department great question marty <laughs> we should have maybe addressed that at the beginning <laughs> totally um well, we, and, we... and the reason i asked that question is is because in in my community a lot of times with people who look like me um some some things are situational mm -hmm. if i can just say things like that and it depends on the company that we're dealing with i, I what yeah who, who are you who am i dealing with through you yeah thank you for naming that um and certainly um, Lauren and I are here as volunteers and as community members. So I work in marketing at a university, um, although I have deep respect for the work that social workers do, but we're affiliated with Lutheran Community Services. So a nonprofit organization um, that I would say is grown out of the grassroots kind of spirit of restorative justice, but I'll let Lauren speak to kind of her access point to this work as well. Um, same, also, volunteer and I do it because it feels like a way to contribute to my community. Mm -hmm. um, I also have other work, <laughs> uh, a couple other jobs actually. Um, but yeah, I do this work because um, I enjoy creating spaces where people can see each other as humans and share perspectives and uh, hopefully restore relationships. And frankly, we believe in this system because it is outside of the federal and state sanctioned justice system. So it's an opportunity, I think, to explore avenues of healing and harm repair that maybe aren't um, as paramount in those systems. So um, 
just to speak back to confidentiality, our conversations here fully confidential and when we have the dialogue together, if we want to move forward with that, there isn't any reporting that goes back to um, the juvenile correctional officer or the judge. The only information shared is that a meeting did occur and it's fully voluntary. So for the youth's um, kind of participation, it's fully voluntary as well and cannot be mandated. Okay. Does that you just the... said, hmm. Go ahead. Yes, what you just said um, for me is, is, is what I needed to hear. That, that, was, that was, I really appreciated that. Thank you. And, and here's where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. I don't want to alter some young person's life. Mm -hmm. I just want to alter this narrow direction in this moment. So I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. I think we're coming close to the end of our time here, but Marty, you've just made me think of a, a great inquiry. We've got an idea of what would feel like a best case scenario for you, an apology, more understanding of what, what the youth was feeling, um, you know, maybe coming to an agreement about what it would mean to repair that harm. Do you have any ideas of what you would want the youth to get out of a meeting if we all came together? Some kind of compassion. Mm. Some, because um, remorse and compassion are two different things and there could be one inside the other, but some kind of compassion for just other people's stuff, other mm -hmm. people's safety. That just wasn't a house, that was my safe place, right? Right. So right. just some kind of understanding of what the impact of the, the, the big impact of what they could maybe think is a little thing. And I hope they wouldn't diminish what happened to my thing as a little thing. But yeah, I would, I would hope they come up, come out with some type of understanding that when you do something like that, you, you make other people feel really, really unsafe. And that's not cool. And for me, there's, there's also got to be a giving back. What are you going to do to give back? If it's not to give back to me, because you can't replace the unreplaceable. Mm -hmm. What can, in, in what way does that person with their gifts or their abilities or their talents think they could give back? Because it doesn't always have to be moving rocks or mm -hmm. um, this kind of punitive work. If maybe if they've got a talent and maybe if they're artistic, they can come and learn some ceramics or at least replace three rabbits. That's best case scenario. I don't know this person, maybe we won't jive like that, but mm -hmm. some type of giving back, if not to me, to a community of people that look like me. So. That's really powerful, Marty. But yes, it's, thanks for the space and for giving me the time to, to think it out. Mm -hmm. And um, we could probably take next steps. If, if we did take next step, what, what does that mean and what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely. So if you're interested in proceeding with dialogue, we'll look at a couple dates um, that have been proposed for a meeting. And then Lauren and I would send out the details for that. And then we would come together in this Zoom setting. We'll meet with you two individually just for a couple minutes to make sure that everyone's comfortable and has their questions asked. And then we'll spend about an hour together in the dialogue space. Um, and if you come to an agreement at the end, uh, a verbal agreement, or if you want to have a more written formal agreement of what repairing the harm would look like, that's possible too. And any time between now and that meeting, uh, Lauren and I are fully available to email or call on the phone with you to answer any questions, or um, if you have other thoughts about things that you'd like to see happen in that dialogue, we could definitely try to accommodate those. But that's what next steps looks like for us. Is that something that you're interested in proceeding with? Sure, sure. We'll give it a chance. Great. Um, I do have just a couple of questions for the dialogue itself. Um, first of all, we did, like um, Corinne mentioned, we did have a conversation 
with Jesse earlier and they are interested in having the dialogue with you also. Um, in terms of being at the dialogue, do you, would you like to have a support person there? And you can no, also decide I, later and tell us later. You don't have to decide thanks. now. Thanks, and right now I, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. I, if, I think if I could just face this young person and see how it goes, we'll, we'll go from there. But if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll ask in plenty of time. Yeah, you absolutely can uh, decide between now and, and the dialogue also. Um, and also another thing I wanted to ask you, um, that's when we all come together in dialogue, we'll you know, do introductions and, and that again. And then generally we'll have somebody speak first. And I was wondering if you would like to speak first or if you would like Jesse to, to speak first, just talking about what happened. Yes, um, I'd like to hear from Jesse first. Yeah. Okay. Corinne, um, do you have any more questions or thoughts? Uh, I'm just so grateful to hear from you, Marty, and, and hear about what is a priority for you. It sounds like it's really aligned with, you know, kind of the hopes that Lauren and I have for what this process could look like. And um, I'm really grateful that you've been willing to engage in something new like this. And um, I'm just pretty moved by how you're thinking about yourself and your community as you settle into a new neighborhood, but you're also very clearly thinking about the impacts for the youth and you want the best for them. And that's not something we require, but it's something that is really moving to see. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. Well, yeah, well, angry doesn't always mean unredeemable. So <laughs> there's that. And, for sure. Uh, yeah, there's there, there can be for folks who maybe want to try other, other ways of doing stuff, but if I meet this person and things kind of shift in the room and it doesn't go well, mm. which I don't expect, but um, yeah, I just, I'm, I'm hoping for the best. And thanks for the work that you've done. It's good work. Mm. Thank you. Well, thanks for saying that. Um, and also just some things to think about uh, from your end before you come to dialogue or just maybe what are some questions that you'd like to ask Jesse and also what are some maybe different options um, of possibilities to make things right? I know that we've covered a lot of things already, but in the time and reflection that you have between now and then, um, just it might be helpful to think through some more some more options. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'll get back to you in, in a couple of days. I'll, I'll think on those. I'll send. How many questions do you think? Oh, just whatever makes sense to you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you don't have to send us anything. It was just more of like a, a, a oh, just, to prepare just myself. Prepare, just to prepare yourself. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that. Right. So, unless you've got anything for me, this has been really informative. Great. Well, thank you again, Marty. It's been really great to talk to you, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks. So, uh, Dialogue. <laughs> dialogue, dialogue still day. there, yeah. <laughs> All right, um, a couple of questions I had for you and then maybe you can share what you had for me. Um, sure. I was just wanting to chat with you a little bit about how we want to do the land acknowledgement. And then I also had a que some questions about how we wanted to do and if we want to do um, values and guidelines for the, for the conversation. Yeah. I really like the discussion that we had by email and I feel like what you shared was great and what Morgan shared was great. Um, I don't wanna take up too much mm -hmm. time with those, um, but I do think that they're really important framing. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm landing. Yeah. What do you think? I think a very, I think a, a shorter one is helpful so that it doesn't detract too much from the purpose of why we're there. And also I think it is also kind of like what you said, an important framing. Yeah. And I think we'll set a nice tone actually. Yeah, I'd love if you were able to do the land acknowledgement mm -hmm. and, and the like racial framing as well that kind of paired with that. Mm -hmm. um, Mine's more then, just uh, like an land acknowledgement and just like, why how it ties to what we're doing today perfect perfect and then uh, i think the 
that will just dovetail nicely into like the purpose of the meeting, reiterating mm -hmm. confidentiality. And I would love to just have uh, like a reiteration of the, how a uh, voluntary mm -hmm. paired with confidentiality. Mm -hmm. So no recording, no sharing out any information about the other, you know, participants outside of this conversation. And in terms of values and ground rules, um, I have never really spent much time on that other than to say like, you know, we are here to, Lauren and I are here to ensure that all of our conversation is really respectful. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, if it feels like you need a quick breather um, in order to be respectful in how you're presenting your thoughts and ideas, we can take a break, um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Just like making clear that those are the ground rules. It's just like respectful conversation mm -hmm. without needing to like define, you know, like no raised voices or no swear words or no mm -hmm. whatever, and just kind of letting it be organic in that way. And then kind of stepping in to reiterate respect if it feels like there's a boundary that's being kind of played with. Yeah, that, uh, that covers a lot of things. I think one thing I would like to add to that is listening to understand. Yeah, great. And then maybe we can just open it up to if they have any additional ones that they would like to have that feels important for the for the conversation mm -hmm. yeah and maybe um listening to understand and like maybe like one person speaking at a time mm -hmm. yeah and that's also particular to doing it on zoom <laughs> yeah yeah um and that might be a great moment to say um you know, we'll start with, we'll start with Jesse sharing a story and, and talking through that experience. And then Marty will share, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll leave some time for Amy to, to share a little bit about the impacts for the family mm -hmm. as well. Um, but I think that'll be a great way to be like, Amy, you aren't the, we'll let you know when it's your space to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, uh, Marty wanted Jesse to go first is that correct mm -hmm. for the storytelling and I think that it'd be good to just check in with him again mm -hmm. perfect and let's, and let's do names and pronouns mm -hmm. Great. um I think it'd be good. Would you mind doing that part of the, just like the overview of the conversation? Yeah. Cause I like the way that you put that. Um, and I think we can both do the guide, the values guidelines. Mm -hmm. Great. I can do the land acknowledgement and then do you want to take the purpose? Sure. Do you want me to do confident? I think we can both do confidentiality and voluntary. Yeah, if it, if it, I feel like that could go with purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm happy to cover that, it. And if I miss anything, that sounds great. Yep. Um, when we bring them in individually, what are some things that we want to make sure we cover? I Other than like, just, hi, how are you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I feel like spending like a couple minutes just really checking in, hearing mm -hmm. um, how their day's been what they're feeling about the conversation, any emotions that are coming up, any questions that they have. Mm -hmm. And then I think with Marty reiterating um, who wants to share first mm -hmm. and then asking for what a couple of those questions were mm -hmm. that Marty wanted to have answered. Um, mm -hmm. And then I don't know if it's, I, I want to make sure it's appropriate, but like a little bit of expectation setting of like, so we know that the best case scenario is an apology with some more information, your questions answered, you know, what it, what's it going to feel like if you don't mm -hmm. get all of the elements that you're looking for today? You know, like, how can we support you if that happens? You know, I'm not totally sure that well, I mean, I think it's good to check in, but I think mm -hmm. maybe what's more, what's most important is just to know that he feels supported by us. Great. So maybe just reiterating mm -hmm. um, that you can take a break and if, you know, 
we can help direct direct the dialogue if needed. Otherwise, we'll be here. Perfect. Yeah, that sounds good. And then for checking in with Jesse, I think reiterating like you're able and interested in taking accountability today. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I guess just like some same thing, like some trust, like do you feel comfortable with us and, mm -hmm. and or what can we do to support you kind of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. And then I think um, we had a really great discussion about resource sharing after mm -hmm. the initial meeting. And so I think maybe as we're doing kind of the checkout of like feelings and things like that, I think I'd love to just kind of preempt them. Like we're, there isn't a ton of follow-up after this. Like you can feel free to, to reach out to us if you have questions or, um, mm -hmm. you know, feedback about this process. You can expect to get one email from us. We'll share out some resources that we like to make sure participants have. Mm -hmm. um, we could even say like community resources or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, With our follow-up follow facilitate a survey. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Perfect. I think yes. that that's a great way to kind of close out with mm -hmm. expectations. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, should I bring Marty in? Yeah, that sounds great. Or is there anything else? Uh, in terms of, I think we have really organic flow in terms of like letting each other share and bounce. I, I feel like, um, we both had strong rapport with both folks, but if you feel like you um, had a stronger rapport with one mm. or the other, I'd love for you to take lead on like those questions of like, what does repairing harm look like for you kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, as of now, not so much, but mm -hmm. in the dialogue, we can definitely pay attention to that. Perfect. Sounds good. Okay. okay. All right, Marty. Um, welcome back. It's just Corinne and I in the room. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> welcome in. Thank you so much. It's nice to see you. <laughs> you too. It's good to good to see you again. How are you feeling today? Uh, honestly, I I'm feeling nervous. I. <laughs> I, I don't like confrontation. I don't, I don't like things like this. So um, I, I, I was hoping I'd come in feeling like I had some kind of upper hand, but I'm just nervous and nervous. Mm -hmm. so. That is very understandable. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. um, we, we really just wanted to um, check in with you first, just to see how you're doing. Um, kind of go over a couple of things just to help um, help you get prepared for dialogue today. And then also just check in to see if there's anything that you needed uh, before we, we bring um, Jesse and their mom in. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so it sounds like you're feeling a little bit nervous. <laughs> um, is there anything that you feel like um, you need from us that in order to feel supported today? No, I, I guess really, I guess just what I need is, is, is just to, to get through this, this process, talk mm -hmm. to this person. It's, it's not just feeling nervous, but there's also just pent up energy. I got things to say, but I don't mm -hmm. know what to say. And quite honestly, I don't want to say anything until I hear what this person has to say, and then I'll, I, I'll, I'll feel better about what to do or how I feel after I hear from from her. So I guess I guess that's where I'm at. I'm just waiting to hear from her and then decide how I feel after that. One step at a time, I guess. Yeah, that's a great way to put it, one step at a time. And so it sounds like, uh, Marty, you're still interested in having Jesse do the kind of storytelling portion first, kind of sharing out what she was going through that day and explaining um, her experience of the incident. And, and then 
kind of dive into questions or would you like to share your experience and then leave questions kind of as the next segment? Um, I, I'd like to do the first, hear, hear, from, hear from her and um, then just maybe I'll just, I'll decide after that. Maybe I'll tell my part or maybe I'll have questions. I don't, I don't Great. really know. Yeah, I'll just, I'll ask that same question when we're in the dialogue and, and leave it to you for what feels uh, most comfortable in the moment. And Marty, we just wanted to, we just wanted to reiterate that um, you can stop it at any time. So if at any moment you don't feel like you want to continue, that's, that's totally an option. I appreciate that, but I, I really want to give this a chance. Awesome. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a chance. I, I feel good about it. Great. Um, we did, we were just curious and you may not have an answer to this. Um, are there any questions that you've been reflecting on that you would want to bring up or that you no. would like to ask Jesse? Or honestly, I was, I'm hoping that everything I need to hear is in what she has to say. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping, I'm, I'm hoping for some honesty. I'm hoping for me, some understanding. I'm, I'm hoping to hear a person who, who might be remorseful or at least give me some idea of what was going on and why, why this happened. That's, that's really all I need. I don't even, I don't even care if they, did it for a bad reason as long as they know and I know I, 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 I feel insecure unsafe and there's a lot of questions and until we do this thing I'm not going to feel better so I just want to feel better and I, I, I hope that that Jesse can give me some answers and um, and give me the feeling that she won't do this again to anyone or she's on a on a better path. I don't know. I just need to see some light somewhere. And it begins with that conversation and her telling me whatever she's going to tell me. Right. Got it. Um, Corinne, anything else uh, that you got before? No, it just sounds like we're all ready to kind of dive in and and see how this conversation flows. And um, I'm really grateful that you're here, Marty, and you're open to this process. And um, obviously Lauren and, our, Lauren and I are there to make sure everything is respectful. And um, uh, you can always, I'll say this again when we, we're all in the room together, but just let us know if you need to take a break um, for some breaths or restroom or anything, just to um, step away and come back. That's always an option. Thank you. I'm gonna put you back in the in the waiting room, um, and then we'll bring you back in when it's time. And when we bring you back in, uh, Jesse and her mom will be there. Okay. All right. See you in a little bit. Thanks Thank so much. Hi, Jesse and Amy. Welcome in. Invite you to unmute yourselves. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Nice to see you again. You too. Um, so Corinne and I just wanted to have a quick conversation before we get into the dialogue and just check in, see how y'all are doing, um, let you know a couple of things about the conversation that's going to happen, and then just see if there's anything that you need from us uh, in order to feel supported today. So. Cool. How are y'all, how are you both doing today? Well, we're busy around the house here, trying to get a bunch done today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks for spending this hour with us. I know that's, it's a lot of time to be giving to this process and we really appreciate that you're uh, investing it with us. Oh Thank yeah, you. no, we're happy to be able to do this. I feel like the last meeting was um, pretty helpful. I think I didn't know what to expect. So um, I'm feeling a little nervous about how this might go, but um, yeah. Nice. Thanks, Amy. I'm so red as can be. nervous to meet the person whose house it was. Mm. 
I, I have a, um, I've tried not to even go by there. Mm -hmm. mm. Jesse, thanks for sharing that. I know that it, it, it sounds like it feels um, a little scary and you might mm. be nervous and that's totally understandable. Um, so yeah, yeah, I really get that. And Corinne and I are gonna try and do our best to make sure that you all feel supported in this. Um, and we also just wanted to reiterate too that at any moment, um, if you don't want to continue, this is a voluntary process. So you, you can stop it at any time if that feels like that's needed. How's the guy, is he into this or? Yeah, we just checked in with Marty as well. And um, it sounds like all of us are, you know, interested in diving into the conversation and just kind of getting things out in the open, having some questions answered. Um, when we closed our last conversation, Jesse, it sounded like you were interested in apologizing and taking some accountability. Is that how you're feeling today as well? Yeah. Is he like really, really mad? Uh, we, we predict that this will be a really respectful conversation. I, I'm sure that Marty will be able to share with you what, what the emotions are, but, um, if you're concerned about tempers, you know, Lauren are here, Lauren and I are here as co-facilitators to make sure that the conversation is really respectful and that everybody feels safe. Mm -hmm. And just to prepare you a little bit, um, it was, uh, Marty's request um, that when we do go into the dialogue that you share a little bit about the, what happened first. So just to um, just to put that out there so that you're prepared that when we do start talking about what actually happened um, that we're going to ask you to go first to start talking. Mm -hmm. So did, did you guys tell him everything that we talked about last time or what does he know already? we didn't share anything from our conversation that the four of us had uh, with Marty. And similarly, we, we haven't shared anything that Marty said with Lauren and I in that initial meeting with you all. So this is kind of a clean slate, a chance to come together um, and, and talk directly to each other. So we will have Marty and Jesse kind of speaking directly to each other. Jesse will start um, by sharing your story, talking about the day of the incident and kind of what the impacts have been for you. And that's a great chance to, to take accountability for, for your actions. And Marty may have a couple questions at that time, or he may wanna go directly into kind of sharing his experience. And then after that, Amy, we'd love to kind of give you a, a minute or two to, to share about your perspective, because you're clearly a pivotal member of this community and this event has affected your life as well. So that's kind of the order of conversation. Um, and then when we get nearer to the end and, and it feels like there's a little bit more of direct conversation between Marty and Jesse, Lauren and I will probably be pretty quiet and just kind of supporting conversation and flow as needed. But we'll, we may get to a point where it makes sense to come to kind of an, an agreement as we described earlier, that maybe there's a way to repair the harm that um, Jesse and Marty can come to an agreement on together. Uh, and Lauren and I can can kind of help guide that process as well. And then we'll close out. We don't predict the conversation being more than about an hour, um, but we can take bathroom breaks. And as Lauren said, Jesse, if there is any point that you feel like you need to not move forward, this is a totally voluntary process and it's up to you. What questions do you guys still have lingering? It's kind of weird doing this on a computer. When you guys do this in person, do people like try to leap across the table at each other? <laughs> no, that's never happened in my experience, but uh, it is, uh, we are missing the chance to, you know, pour everybody a glass of water and tell you where the restrooms are. And <laughs> the in-person element is definitely missed for me, but I'm really grateful that we can, we can still have this process go on, even though we're in our homes. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I did think about putting a little something extra in the coffee. <laughs> to get this thing. I'll tell you what. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, um, so I'm going to put you all. Actually, I think that it makes sense for us to just leave you all in the main room. And then we're going to just bring Marty back in because he's been in the waiting room. And then we'll all go over just kind of some logistics stuff. 
uh, Amy, to your point about being on Zoom and some other things that are important for us to just know for our time together, and then we'll get into the dialogue. So I'm gonna go ahead and invite Marty back in and then we'll get started, okay? It's Thank you. Awesome. Yes, good to see you again. You too. I think we'll start off. Uh, Lauren, do you want to do introductions first or kick off with the land acknowledgement? Um, let's do introductions first and okay. then we'll get into the acknowledgement. Um, I wanted to just do a quick round of names and the pronouns that you use just so that we're all on the same page uh, when we get started for the dialogue. So I'll start. My name is Lauren. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a volunteer facilitator. <laughs> it's really nice to see you all again. I'm Corinne Gould. I'm the other co-facilitator and I use she, her pronouns. Uh, let's hear from Marty next. Hi, my name is Marty. I use him and Mr. Thank you. Great. And Jesse. Uh, hi, I'm, I'm Jesse. Um, I think everybody knows why I'm here. Um, so, um, what I, I use she and her. Um, uh, Mr. Marty, what should I call you? You can call me Marty, that's fine. And my name's Amy. I'm, I'm Jesse's mom. And, uh, I use uh, she and her, and um, yeah, thanks. And it's it's nice to meet you, uh, Marty. You as well. Thanks. Great, thank you all. Um, so before we get into the dialogue and um, also talking about logistics, uh, we wanted to start with a land acknowledgement. And the reason why we start with the land acknowledgement is because um, it's important to recognize the land that we are on uh, is indigenous land. And I, we do it at each dialogue um, because it's important to recognize in, this, in all of the spaces that we show up in um, that the land that we're on, we, I personally, um, appreciate getting to do my work. And also I recognize that the work that I do is on stolen land. And it's important whenever we can to acknowledge that. Um, also in terms of uh, restorative justice and the work that we're doing here today, um, it's important to take accountability whenever possible of the harm that's been done in the past and there's been a lot of harm that's been done to native communities. So in order to t acknowledge that, I want to recognize the lands that we're on um, are specifically, and I'm talking about, I, we're currently in Portland, Oregon. This could be different if we were doing this um, elsewhere, um, but the lands that we're currently on are traditional homelands of the Multnomah, Wasco, Kalitz, Kalamit, Clackamas, Watala Bands of Chinook, Tualatin Kalapuya, Malala, and many other indigenous nations who made their homes along the Columbia and Willamette Rivers. By recognizing these communities, um, we are recognizing uh, the past and we're also recognizing that these communities still exist and are alive today. So just wanted to bring that into our conversation today. And thanks for taking the time to do that with me. <laughs> Jesse, did you know that? Are you learning that in school? We're on Chinook. We're on Chinook land. Well, that's neat. Thanks, thanks, Lauren, for leading us through that. That's a little bit newer to our uh, facilitation process, but I think it's already brought some value. Um, so I'll just dive into talk a little bit about the purpose for today's conversation. Um, we've had conversations separately and this is our chance to kind of come together and ground in why we're, we're sharing space today. So Lauren and I are kind of serving as community member representatives as well as facilitators um, to keep us moving along respectfully. But the goal here today is really for Jesse to have the space to um, take accountability and be heard 
sharing about her experience of the incident, for Marty to share about his experience, and to be able to um, think about and talk about the impacts and our impacts on one another and, and to talk about how to repair some of the harm that's been done. And that's unique to a process like this because instead of um, you know, the state or a, a separate entity telling us how to repair harm, uh, we get to make that decision together. So um, Marty gets to have his voice heard and, and Jesse, you get to bring your creativity and your thought to that as well. So um, as a reminder, it's a totally voluntary process. Jesse and Marty, if you need to take a quick break or if you wanna step away, if that needs to happen for you, that's um, totally possible at any point in this process. Um, right around the halfway mark, we'll probably invite a break for um, some water and bathrooms if needed. Um, and we're going to start with Jesse sharing her story and then uh, we'll check in with Marty about questions and then uh, Marty will share his story as well. Just a reminder about confidentiality. Um, nothing that we discuss in this room today will get shared out. Um, the exception being that Lauren and I are mandatory reporters. So if we hear about um, child or elder abuse in any way, we will have to share that. But otherwise what is kind of said here stays here. And so I'd like confirmation from Jesse and Marty and Amy that you agree not to take any screenshots or um, record any portion of today's conversation. Does everyone agree to that? I agree. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. And part of that is really just to respect the privacy of everyone that's, um, that's here today. Did I miss anything mm -hmm. in there, Lauren, before we talk about some just ground rules for, for discussion? Um, I think that was good. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Well, Lauren and I chatted about um, just a couple, I think, ground rules that help e an easy conversation. So one thing, because we're on Zoom, you're probably going to hear my dog in the background. Uh, you know, we might have family members coming and going and things like that. We're just going to roll with the punches there. But um, if uh, if we can avoid having more than one person speaking at a time, let's definitely do that. There'll be some Zoom awkwardness of us talking over each other, but trying to avoid that when possible. And then Lauren suggested a great one, which is um, listen to understand. So this is a great chance to um, use the space when someone else is speaking to really hear them. Are there any other um, kind of ground rules or guidelines that sound good for this conversation, we can start with you, Marty. Is there anything else you'd like to see us agree upon? No, this all sounds good to me. Great. How about you, Jesse? It's good. Cool. All right. Well, um, I think that sounds good in terms of all of the maintenance. I think we're ready to, to move forward. Um, I also just wanted to say in terms of Zoom, <laughs> if you know, some of us might, in addition to background noise, might get frozen or bumped off. And if that happens, we'll just wait <laughs> for the person to rejoin. And if for some reason you can't, um, you have my phone number. So go ahead and call and then um, we'll figure out a way to get started again. Thanks, Lauren. All right, Jesse, I'd love to give the floor over to you um, to describe, you know, the day of the incident and what was happening for you. Um, and feel free to describe it with as much detail as you can. And then um, it, maybe describe some of the impacts that you've noticed for you and your family since then. Um, okay, well, I've had a lot of time to think about it. And um, it feels really weird to start out talking about that day because it sounds like like an excuse, um, you know? And um, when, when I, I broke the things, I wasn't thinking it would hurt anybody. I, I, I never met Marty before. I didn't know who lived in that house. I, um, I, I, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Um, so, uh, 
my mom and her boyfriend were, were fighting that morning. And so I was, I didn't want to go downstairs. And um, so I was late getting out of the house and I got to school late and I got detention for being late. And then I found out I was failing one of my classes and um, I just, I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to go home and tell my mom I was failing social studies and I just, I just didn't. Um, I had a lot of, uh, I don't know, I was mad. I was frustrated. I was, uh, a lot of stuff in there I, did, I had to do something with and I just was walking by and I saw those things that looked like they would break and I just wanted to break something I thought it would make me feel better um so that's what I did and then before I even got home uh, a police guy stopped and asked me about it. And I said, well, yeah, I did it. I didn't think it was a real big deal. You know, I just, there was some stuff there and I just broke it. And so I told him I did. And um, yeah, anyhow, I'm, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, I am sorry. I, I, I never thought about there being a person, you know? That was just things. And what has it been like for you since then, Jesse? Well, I'm glad that we're that we're finally doing this because it just it takes a long time and it's it's like I gotta, you know, um, I would like to be able to do something that did make me feel better because that didn't breaking things didn't make me feel better and I still don't feel better. Well, I feel worse. And was there anything that you wanted to say directly to Marty about the incident and and what you've been thinking about since then? Well, um, after the last time that, um, that my mom and I talked with uh, Corinne and, and Lauren, um, the idea of being able to do something that would, that would help to make it better, I really, I mean, I don't know what I could do. I, you know, I don't have any money, but, but um, I just, if there's something that I could do. I don't know what it would be, but if there's something that I could do, I think that would, I think that would help. Uh, Jesse, is there anything else that you want to say about it? Either what you were thinking at the time or anything about the details about what happened that day? Yeah, it was just, it was just a stupid thing. I was just mad. I was just upset. <clears throat> it's, you know, I mean, I wasn't obviously was not thinking anything through. You know, I guess that's what I've been thinking about is that, you know, it's like, you know, you, you can't just do things without, without thinking about <laughs> more. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sharing all that, Jesse. Um, sounds like you've been reflecting a lot since that time and that it, um, you've come to some realizations about things. Um, Marty, I wanna invite you to just share what your experience has been like. Yes, thank you. Um, so for me, coming home to my stuff being broken and it, it just, it felt like a real violation. It felt like a real violation. For some people, it, it might seem like, oh, the, it, was, it was nothing, it was, but I, I felt violated. I felt 
afraid. Um, I, I felt angry and I'm still feeling a little bit of that even now. And this is, you know, this is, it was, it was, it was weeks ago and I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling it. And, and here's the thing, my, my house is my safe place. This was the prettiest place on the block until that happened, the cutest house on the block. I put safety doors on my front and my back door. The guy who was installing my safety doors put up a safety window, a shield, right? So, and I get this alarm, this, this, this thing so I can see what's going on outside of my house. I even put a fence up around it, a little a picket fence. So, you know, and and the yard isn't isn't the most even. So I put up this fence, and it's all leaning over. But I need to feel safe. And the house that used to be my castle, people walk up to it now. It looks like an ugly thing with bad teeth. It's it's not the same house, but. Here I am wanting to feel safe and, and have some kind of peace of mind and and some things, some things you can't get back. And some things take a long time to get back. So it's it's not been easy. So yeah, and and I listen to to Jesse and I really appreciate what what you said, I, I was your age once. What, what are you, 17, 14, right? We, we, we do some things and we can be destructive. I, I get that, and, but it still doesn't make it right. Mm -hmm. there, there, I wish that you would have, I wish there would have been another way mm -hmm. instead of breaking something because breaking up my stuff kind of broke me up a little bit. I don't know, I don't know what to do with that. I don't know mm -hmm. who to trust. I don't, I, there's that something was taken from me and it was my sense of safety and peace of mind. And mm -hmm. I don't know how to get that back. I can put up the security stuff and I can keep people from coming in my yard. And I thought that was gonna keep me, make me feel safe again. But I don't know. So that's a thing. Mm -hmm. Marty, else, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> um, you know, I've heard that you said that it's um, your safety and your security and your peace of mind. Are there any other impacts in regards to, um, yeah, how, how it's impacted you? Well, um, just an overall sense of, of dis-ease or uneasiness and um, makes me question my neighbors, whether I wanna be, whether they are, they are good neighbors. I just, just, I don't know, it's rational and irrational at the same time. I got, I got questions that I can answer and questions that can't be answered. And I didn't have any of this stuff a month ago. Mm -hmm. So I was hoping that through this process, some kind of that feeling would come back, but now I'm just feeling it more. So, um, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying I'm sitting here angry, but I am feeling what I'm feeling. So I'm, I might, might just need a minute to, to, to think it out. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know I, I, I didn't know that I'd, I'd, I'd feel the same way I felt the day that it happened. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I, I just, that's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marty, for sharing that with us. If now feels like a good time, you know, Marty, I think I hear you wanted to, to take a moment to collect your thoughts and, and kind of sit with those feelings. Maybe now's a good time to hear from Amy a little bit and just take a minute and talk about the impacts for the family. Does that sound good? That would be great, thank you. Awesome. You can go ahead and unmute yourself, Amy, and, and share a little with us about 
you know, what was that day like for you? And, uh, and maybe also you can share with us how it feels to hear Jesse taking accountability today and, and what that journey has been like. Sure. Uh, if it's okay, I'd rather not go much into the details of that day, but I'm really um, taken aback right now by um, a side of my kid that I've never seen before. Uh, and I mean that in a very good way. I think that in the time that it's taken to, to come to this appointment today, you know, we have had a lot of time to sit with it as a family and realize that uh, we don't want any bad blood with anybody in the neighborhood, you know? That's not, that's not what's happening here. Um, and, uh, you know, I've seen Jesse mature in this process in a way that, I, that totally caught me by surprise. Maybe better than how I would have reacted if I was, was her when I was 14, you know? And, and uh, you know, Marty, we're really sorry. Like we didn't, we didn't know. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't understand all the pieces to this. So it's pretty cool. I didn't know that there was a thing like this that, that would help people just like talk to each other. Cause wow, it's really, uh, it's just kind of a different thing instead of like duking it out in the street or the parking lot, you know, and like just, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, I don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. I'll be honest, I really don't want anything bad to happen to my kid. She's been dealing with a lot of stuff and I'm responsible for some of that too. And um, I'm, I'm trying to make some changes here at home so that uh, that can support her in a better way. So yeah, uh, I think that's all. Yeah. And um, thanks to, to all of you, uh, you know, Lauren and Corinne for being so nice about this. I'm not used to people being so nice. So that's, uh, that's really cool. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Marty, Marty mm -hmm. we're really sorry. Mm -hmm. Thanks for sharing that, Amy. Um, I was curious if any of you just had any questions for each other. Just wanted to open it up for that. Yeah, Jesse. I just, I don't want anybody to be afraid of me. I don't want to make anybody scared. Mm -hmm. that, and I never, I never thought of that being what would happen. I, I, if there's anything I can do to make you stop being scared, I'll, I want to do that. That, that's not something I ever wanted. I really appreciate you saying that, Jesse, and I really appreciate your mom saying what she said. And I know you didn't mean, and I really believe that. I really believe what you're telling me. Um, I wish I could say it helps me right now but that would be a lie. So, but what I will say is that I appreciate you trying to, to be accountable and for being honest and telling the truth because it's, it's, this is, it's really hard. It's, it's really hard sometimes to have these kinds of conversations and it's and lots of people lots of people wait until they're in a really really terrible situation to turn things around or just just say words that really don't mean much but I I believe you and I don't I don't know at this point what you can do but I feel better after hearing your apology. So that's a start. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't want anything bad to happen either. The, 
reason I wanted to go through this process or at least give it a chance is because I don't want you to have to go behind bars or some youth authority or whatever happens to kids nowadays. I was in that space one time and we all, we all do things. So, so this process, I hope is a signal to you from me that maybe something in the end can come of this. We can come up with some type of something. I, you don't have money and the stuff that you broke is priceless. So that's kind of a wash. You couldn't pay for it anyway. So maybe, maybe it's not money. Maybe it's some other way. There's something and I don't know. I, I just appreciate you being honest. I know this is really hard. It's really hard for me too. Um, but maybe we can work something out. Thank you. Thank you for not yelling. <laughs> I'm interested, Jesse, what does it feel like to hear that Marty was thinking about you too, that part of his motivation for this process was your learning. What does that feel like to hear that? Um, well, I'm, I, I just thought he'd be really mad. And I mean, he is mad, but he's not, you know, mean about it. He's, he just seemed like a really cool guy and that makes me feel extra bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's different when it's a, a real person, isn't it? Yeah. This is a really special chance, I think, to get to know each other as people. Um, yeah. And neighbors and community members. I mean, you all live down the street from each other. Marty, yes. I'm interested if you want to share a little bit more with Jesse and, and Amy about uh, about the, the animals in your yard that were broken, if you want to share any more about those and how they were made and what they mean to you. Well, I'm an artist, so they're, they're made by hand. It's ceramics, it's not pottery, it's ceramics. And um, it's a technique that my mom taught me when I was a kid. So I'm the only one who really does it this way. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a real time consuming process of taking the mud, working it, taking out the rocks and impurities because I, I, could, I work with, with clay of my own. I go get it, I don't go store bought. You can't, you just, you have to go to the earth to make this stuff. So I make the clay, I bring the clay home and I form it into, I would call myself an abstract expressionist. So you might not have known you were kicking over rabbits but that's what they were. Some people say they look like antelopes, but the rabbits. And you know, it's they're they're just fun. It brings me a sense of satisfaction, and it's also how I pay my rent. So, and it's really really important to me. So, and and I put myself into this work. Every one of them is a unique piece of its own, even if it's the same color as the one next to it, it's completely different. So that's why people like them and that's why people buy them because it's never the same rabbit twice. But when I saw it shattered on the ground, that was me. That's my livelihood. That's, that's my paycheck, that's my art. So it wasn't just looking at something that was broken. That's all of me. And I thought it was just, just mean. So yeah, so that's, that's, my art is all I have. It's, 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 it's the only thing that my mother could actually give me in this world. So it's very, very important. And of course, there's no way you could know that. But I always thought that when people looked at them, they would know that. So just to see these things broken like that was, it, it shattered more than just ceramics. It shattered my idea of the art that I make and 
I don't know. It felt like somebody just really hated it. So it, it sounds silly. I'm an artist. And when you broke my stuff, it felt like a social critique. It felt like a no. It felt like it wasn't important. It felt like people were saying your art is ugly. And I took it very personal. So anyway, but just by me talking about it, I hope you know how important it is to me. Every piece is like my own child. So when you did that, it was really personal. Jesse, <laughs> can you talk a little bit about what it feels like to hear that? Um, I didn't even look at them. I didn't even really look. I think that hurts the most. Jesse, what did you hear Marty saying about that? I heard him say that, that they were not just things, that they were a lot more than just a thing. Just, I mean, if I had, if I just stopped long enough even just to look, you know, it, I'm sorry. Me too, Jesse. Not because I thought they were ugly. <laughs> that makes me feel better. Really. I'm just so grateful to hold the space with you both being really honest and authentic in this moment. And, and so I just want us to take a breath to appreciate the hard work of this conversation. Thank you so much for showing up here like this. Um, you know, I don't want us to do anything that feels forced. Um, it sounds like we've talked through a lot of the pieces that are still kind of open for us to learn from. You know, Jesse, you're thinking about some of the things that you could do differently because you'll, you'll feel mad in the future. We all do. We have those really hard days and you're still kind of searching for what would be the healthiest thing for you when that comes up again. And Marty, I heard you, you know, describing what felt like, um, you know, a loss of safety and a real, like, a place of hurt around your art and your creation and your connection with your mother and the land. And that's really big stuff, you know, I don't think that there's just one single thing that'll repair that harm. But I'd love to open up the conversation if there are things that Marty, you're looking for that could feel like support that, that Jesse could offer. Um, or Jesse, if you heard anything that Marty was describing and, and there's something that you want to offer, whether that's um, you know your time or your energy or a commitment you wanna make for how you're gonna be moving forward. I think maybe we could talk about that next. Um, I mean, I could dig clay. Digging clay is really hard, Jesse. It's not like just digging up dirt. It's, it's to make the clay pure. It's a real muddy, sweaty process. It's really, a, it's, it's, it's not like making mud pies. It's real work. It, it's your, your arms and your back will ache after you've made 10 pounds of of clay you'll feel like you've done a whole day's do work I, I could do it jesse i could pick up an extra shift and we can go get your nails done after <laughs> marty it sounds like there's definitely um an art even to the process of the sourcing um and we don't want to put you on the spot. And in this moment, you can definitely think about it. But if there was a way that Jesse could support 
that process, whether it was digging the clay or, or, or helping you move things into uh, you know, your car or, or something like that. Maybe there's a, a piece of, of the process that Jesse could help with or that you could uh, you know, pass on some of that legacy that you have, some of that information to, to your neighbor, Jesse. That sounds good to me because it's, I'm just saying it's, it's really hard work. So mm -hmm. I, a lot of times I have to pay people when I've needed help and I've paid them once and then they hadn't come back. So that tells you <laughs> kind of what it's like, but um, if you're willing to learn how to do that, Jesse, there's several steps of it before it becomes clay and each of those steps is really, really hard and you have to do them precisely. If the first step has impurities, you're not gonna have clay at the end or it'll break. So there's three processes that the work takes and all of them are time consuming. But if you learn it, you might want to do this yourself. It's a really, I learned this through my family of, of Cherokee friends. So, uh, the art is mine and I used to buy the clay, but I learned how to make the clay. So it's, it's a true indigenous way of, of making it. So if you want to learn, it's, it's actually a fabulous and it could be a valuable skill. That's the reason that my pottery sells, I mean, my ceramics sell the way they do is because uh, that clay is so thick and so dense because it comes from the ground. But that's something that maybe we could could do together but you would have to commit to a full process to get me clay you can't quit when you dig the mud and not come back the next day to form it and take it out in the third day to actually make it pure it those it's it's if you could commit to to three hard days of work then that could be a start i'd be willing to do that Mom, would, would it be okay? I think it sounds wonderful. Yeah, I think it sounds great. But here's, here's the thing, Jesse, can you, can you take instructions? Can, can you work without getting mad? Can, can because I, I might be a tough taskmaster because this, it's, this isn't play. We're, we're not making Play-Doh. So um, if you can't take, I'm, I'm never mean, but there's precise strict ways that you have to do certain things. And um, I need to know that if you're going to be an apprentice for me, that you're going to be a real apprentice and not just hoping to finish something and get through this process. Because this is real for me. And I, I usually don't have people help me because the process is hard and it's actually kind of a spiritual practice. So I don't invite people often because I don't, because it, it's, it's healing work. The mud is actually healing work. So there's something else in it that if I bring people to that process who aren't committed to the outcome, I can't even make art with it. I'd have to leave it there. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, it becomes sacred once we put our hands in it and we have to finish it all the way through. Could you do that? As long as it's not social studies, I think I could do it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I may just interject for a minute, I, um, I think that, um, you know, sometimes Jesse agrees to things that without being grounded in what it takes to 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 actually see it through and uh and we have our own like limitations and i want to be sure that uh, we can sort out the logistics around how she can actually deliver on what you're asking mm -hmm. so i think that maybe jesse it would be a good idea for us to work out um how you'll get time off and uh you know how how we can try to create the space needed to be able for her to show up to do that with you because jesse has some obligations also that uh we just need to work on rearranging some things so that you know we're just trying to work on uh 
showing up for the things you signed up for and seeing mm -hmm. it through. Uh, so yeah, so let us, if it's okay, uh, figure out how to rearrange all the things and then maybe you can give us a sense of, uh, you know, what, what you have in mind, Marty. I, I think that's fair. And the, the truth is there, there's, there's no rush at this point. The clay will always be there. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, Jesse, I, I look forward to us being neighbors and maybe through this process becoming friends and having having something really cool happen from a really crappy situation. Hmm. So uh, I'll I'll just say this when when you're finished with your commitments or when you're at a place where you have some time and it could be a a weekend, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or or any day that works for your schedule. Because I'm an artist, so I that's what I do. My I can, like, I'm I'm open to whatever that is. But you tell me when you're ready, or Amy, you tell me when when Jesse's ready, and we'll just have a conversation and and go from there. I, there's one space that I go in the forest where they actually have, um, I call a. A, a clay patch and it's it's a really good space for really dense excellent clay but it's a little further up so it takes a truck we dig some buckets of it bring it home to work with so maybe we can figure out the logistics and and uh, after you've got some time hmm. well, just uh, oh, go ahead lauren <laughs> i'm just gonna appreciate um that y'all are coming to this understanding and agreement. And um, if it feels good to you all after the conversation, y'all can exchange contact info and um, for all the logistic stuff. Um, I did wanna ask you, um, being that y'all are neighbors and community members, is there anything particularly Marty that you need in order to feel like, like in order to make things right? Because it sounds like you're making some agreements around things to do. I'm just wanting to open up the space to see if there's anything else that you need in order to feel like things are being made right. Yes, and it might be a lot to ask, but I'm new on the block and I don't know my neighbors. So maybe we could have tea or coffee. You can come. Nobody's used my doorbell yet. so. Maybe you can drop by and we can be neighborly. So that would be helpful for me. And also, um, I like letters. So if Jesse, during this time before we get to go make some clay or something, if you would just write me a note, uh, a hello neighbor note, and um, so I can receive it in my mailbox. That would make me feel like I'm finding my community and there's people in my community that I know and that I can go to in, in the event that, you know, some, we all need something every so often. So maybe we can, it's, this is a weird way to, to make neighbors, but, <laughs> but you're asking me what I need and I need a letter in my mailbox and I need neighbors who come to visit and say hello and welcome to the neighborhood. That would be nice. Thanks, Marty. How do those, how do those requests sound to you, Jesse? I can, I can do that. I'll write you back too. <laughs> Marty, I also I need the particular. Sorry, <laughs> is there any particular timeline that you need for that? The or sooner the better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel safer yeah. knowing knowing my neighbors. Mm -hmm. Something that I really appreciate about. Marty's asks 
and Amy's point and Jesse, your eagerness to show up, I'm just hearing a lot of mutual respect. You know, Marty, you're really giving Jesse a chance to, to make good and to repair the harm. And that's a really generous gift. And Jesse, you are clearly interested and willing and eager to, uh, to show up in those ways. And Amy, as the parent, you're doing a great job grounding us in reality, <laughs> mm -hmm. reminding us that, that schedules are important and, and school's a, a big priority. So thank you, all three of you, for what you're bringing here to this conversation. Hey, I'm just excited it's going to get her away from her cell phone for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I will say I'm excited to, to have somebody share the load of some of my work and maybe even even teach it too. So mm -hmm. yes, that's, I would have never expected this. So. Hmm. Well, it feels like we're coming to a closing of the conversation. Lauren, um, can I ask one yeah. last question? Absolutely. Um, I was just gonna ask Jesse, Jesse, how are you feeling mm -hmm. about all of the stuff that, that we just said? For me, I'm feeling better. When we first started to talk, I told you I wasn't sure where this was going and I was feeling uh, some kind of way. I'm feeling better. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate you showing up in this way. It, 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 it takes a lot and it, sh it says a lot about me. So thank you. And I, how do you feel? Um, well, uh, like I said, nothing, nothing made me feel better before. <laughs> um, but now, now I feel like there's, there's some place that I can, it can be better, you know, and I, uh, I don't like the idea of anybody being afraid of me, but, uh, you know, uh, making art with somebody, that's, that's the opposite of being afraid. So yeah, it does. I find it does make me feel better. Thank you. And I don't, I'm not afraid of you anymore. So. Is there anything else that y'all are sitting with that you'd like to share? I'm just really grateful. Yeah, thanks. I really feel good about how this just turned out. I feel a lot of relief. And Jesse, I'm really proud of you. I'm really, I really am. This is really, this is good. Thanks for, thanks for doing this today. I know this was not easy. Uh, and I'll say the same to you, Marty. I know it can be hard to uh, confront people when they hurt you. And it feels uh, hard to say how you feel. Um, and I know what it's like to have things that you care about be broken. And uh, it was really helpful for me to listen to you today. Mm. So thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much for saying that. You're very kind. I look forward to us being neighbors. Me too. Well, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for kind of checking in and, and seeing how much has changed just in this hour together. It's really powerful. And I'm really grateful to have been here with you. Um, to some of the housekeeping, uh, Lauren and I will follow up with you by email individually to give you um, just a chance to offer your thoughts on the process in a survey so that we can keep improving and make sure that more of our community members can engage in, in a process like this. And we'll also share out just some community resources that we love to share and, and hope that people will have on hand um, and if you have questions for us or, or you want to reach back out, email is a, a great way to get in touch or phone. Uh, and Lauren and I are, are here to support you after today as well. So feel free to, to send us a note and we're here to answer questions or, or be helpful if we can. There's a question that's kind of sitting here, if, if, if I can ask it. Mm -hmm. 
what would be the alternative for Jesse? This doesn't work, or this isn't available. What, what, what's the situation? Where does, where does a person stand? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question, Marty. Um, I'll answer this and, and Lauren, you can jump in as well. And, um, you know, we are a voluntary process that's supported by Multnomah County, but we are separate from, you know, juvenile corrections. So if Jesse isn't able to send a note or, or stop by, um, that doesn't change the, the standing of the case at all. This kind of agreement and this community driven solution to repairing harm is separate from, from any process with the courts. Mm. So uh, I think in some ways that's incredible because we have just the accountability to each other as neighbors and community members, as opposed to um, the fear of of a punishment or or something like that. So Marty, you'll know that when Jesse is able to make good on these agreements, it's truly because she wants to and is motivated to repair the harm. Mm. So that's one of the real the real strengths of this process. Did I get to answer your question in terms of of alternatives or or the way we're connected to the juvenile system? Yes, thank you very much. I mm -hmm. I I just don't want to see somebody put behind bars or in a space if I, I just wouldn't want that mm -hmm. not for something that could be worked out that's certainly how lauren and i feel that's why we're volunteers in a process like this we're there with you Marty. And I don't have anything else to add. I think Corinne said it well. I just wanted to echo and say how deeply appreciative I have M of all of you to take the time to be here and your willingness to put your whole selves into it. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, with that, I think we'll end the meeting. Thank you again, everyone. And we hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. Take care of yourselves. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. Thanks, everybody.